Hey everyone, uh, just showing you a little bit today about Desmos and its new 3D grapher. Uh, at least it's new at the time of this recording. Uh, so if you go to desmos.com, uh, you have several options available to you. Uh, the one people normally use is the, the graphing calculator, the 2D graph uh, that's right here. Uh, but there's this new uh, 3D version uh, right now, it's in beta. Uh, that may change in the future, but uh, you can try it now. So uh, if you just click that, uh, you'll get this desmos.com slash 3D. And uh, if you ever want to go there um, quickly, you can just type in desmos.com and then with the slash 3D, that'll take you to this 3D grapher. Uh, so a few things that I'll point out in here that uh, we're going to be using in the Calc 3 class. Uh, one thing to notice, right, is there's uh, kind of this uh, three axis grid over here x y and now the new z axis uh, that is uh, obviously the uh, 3d coordinate system that we're used to uh, if you uh, a couple things over here uh, if you click this it'll kind of default uh, to this orientation where uh, you have x on the right is positive uh, positive y going kind of into the screen away from you uh, the Z coming up. So that is uh, the Desmos default. Uh, a lot of times in the books, they'll draw things kind of oriented this way uh, with your positive X on the left, positive X on the right coming toward you, uh, and then Z axis going up. But uh, it's the same thing. It's just a rotation uh, around for that. Uh, if you click this other button up here, uh, this uh, looks like a, a grid uh, that will uh, change to where you are looking down the z-axis and uh, you get the usual 2D view. Uh, so x is on the right and y is on top. Uh, and you're just looking down the z-axis. So positive z would be coming toward you uh, out of the screen and the negative z would be going into the screen. There's a few other settings that are in here. We may look at a couple of those in a minute. Uh, you have the normal like radians degrees. Um, and some other stuff. So I'll, I'll uh, talk about those in a second. Uh, you can zoom as normal, uh, either with the, the plus and minus, or you can use your scroll wheel if you want to zoom that way, if you have one. Uh, so either way on that. Uh, and if you kind of throw, throw this, um, so right now I'm clicking on it to drag it around, but if I uh, just let go, it'll actually spin this around so you can uh, look at stuff and do other things without having to uh, rotate it by hand each time. Uh, the faster you throw it, the faster it'll spin. You can also throw it really slow and uh, let go of your mouse button. It'll it'll start rotating slow. Uh, so that's just a couple features on um, on the graph, even if you don't have anything graph, just on the the coordinate system. So over here, I'll graph a couple of things that we're going to do in this class. Uh, not necessarily in order, but uh, there's just graphing a, a function like z equals some function of x and y. So I could type in z is 2x plus 3y. Uh, that will be the equation of a plane. We'll do other equations of planes uh, a little bit later. Right now I'm just putting in some stuff or 2x you know, minus 4y uh, plus 5z equals 9. Uh, so that's another equation of a plane, and if uh, I rotate it, I can kind of see where those planes are, where they intersect, uh, stuff like that. And so, uh, if, again, if you want to zoom out, I can zoom out, I can zoom in, uh, kind of change uh, how that's going to look on my screen. Uh, other things we're going to do are uh, vectors. I'm working with vectors, and um, if you want to graph a vector, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is very similar to, before I do that, uh, this is very similar to uh, the regular Desmos 2D grapher in that I can uh, just click on these uh, to show things. I can uh, change what color I might want to use on those. Uh, so some of that is, is going to be the same as you experienced with the 2D grapher. Uh, let's go ahead and do a vector. Uh, so uh, for vectors, you just type vector. Uh, the, uh, the little angle brackets like this don't work. Uh, Desmos interprets those as less than, greater than, uh, only. So uh, 
Uh, so you have to type vector and then put in a starting point and an ending point. So if I want a starting point, I could put in something like um, one, two, three, and then my ending point, I'll put a comma, and then where I'm going to end, maybe four, negative two, and uh, seven, something like that. Uh, so that would draw me, I'm going to hide those two graphs, that would draw me a vector starting at uh, whatever point I decided, uh, ending at the other point that, uh, that I have right there. Uh, notice this is slightly different than the way we're used to thinking about vectors, which is that this can be located anywhere in space. Um, for Desmos, obviously, to plot it, it has to have a starting location. So uh, this is the way that they've designed the, the vector system is just to put in your starting point, ending point. Uh, that way it knows where to draw it. And I'll put the little arrow uh, going uh, at the end of that second point. You can also, if you want, uh, go ahead and do um, a vector function. Uh, so something like this, where I have, let's say, uh, a lot of times I use R. So R of T, right, is, and normally we think of like X is a function of T, Y is a function of T, Z is a function of T, uh, and list out the explicit like X, Y, Z type of thing. Um, sort of like parametric equations so i can type those in so if uh, let's say x is uh, 2t plus 1 uh, the y is let's say 3t and the z is t minus 1. Um, uh, i can't use r as a function name so let me change that to uh, v uh, then that is my all right uh, point. So this right now is a point, it's not a vector. Uh, and if I want to actually plot a point, right, I could just do something like V of 1 and then put a point right there. Uh, if I wanted to do V of 2, right, I'll put a point over here. And I don't usually like the gray except in certain circumstances. So I'm going to change that to blue. Uh, so there's my point where right? I can tell kind of where it's at. If I want to do, say, like a V of N, right, at a slider, uh, then I can go ahead and, you know, see where that point is going to end up and uh, see what's going on with that guy right there. Uh, so that I can kind of change where that point's going to be in space just by making that variable N and then adjusting the N. If I want to actually see the vector, then I would, you know, kind of put in right, right here. Uh, vector and again it would need a starting point something like maybe zero 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 uh, if I want my tail at the origin which is usually what we think of with vector functions and that will draw now this blue arrow pointing right at wherever I want and uh, now I can see that vector changing as I change that in uh, to point wherever it's supposed to point uh, based on this function. Uh, one other thing that I'll say is a lot of times when we think of vector functions, we think of kind of the trace of that uh, tip of the vector. And so one last thing that I'll show you on here is I can go ahead and uh, put in this 2t plus 1, 3t and t minus 1. Uh, without, you know, defining the function in front of it. And Desmos will interpret that as uh, parametric equations. And so uh, it uh, defaults to kind of this t value 0 to 1, which only shows right a very short line segment right there. Uh, if you want to change that, maybe we'll go negative 10 to 10, right? Uh, much longer segment. So now I can kind of see uh, where that line is pointing. And right now if i move that in right the tip of that vector is going to point at you know some place on that line uh, so this vector function right here is uh, performing a trace right of this line uh, formed by those uh, parametric equations three equations right uh, one variable coming in three things coming out the x y and z uh, a couple other things right that i mentioned you could do over here in the settings so this is going to be, uh, I can uh, reverse contrast, right? So if you like 
black background uh, and then uh, white, you know, graph. Uh, the colors aren't going to change for these defined like green, blue, red. Uh, so some of those might be a little harder to see uh, depending on how you how you like it, but you can do a reverse contrast. Uh, you can also do uh, translucent surfaces. So if I say show one of these planes again, uh, you'll notice if I look from this direction, I can't really see anything behind it. But if I check the translucent surfaces, then I'll make it uh, see through at least a little bit and I can kind of see what's going on behind there, although not as well as what's going on in front. Uh, so that's translucent surfaces. Uh, I'll go ahead and hide that again. The other thing you can do is you can hide the X white plane. So you'll notice it kind of grays out a little bit, uh, anything that's below that X Y plane. And if I uncheck it, it'll hide that X Y plane grid completely. So I can see uh, what's going on underneath a little bit better uh, if things are being obscured. Uh, numbers, right? So you can either uh, toggle the numbers on and off or labels, right? Those X, Y, Z labels, you can toggle those on and off if you like. Uh, and there's, there's also these graph bounds. So zooming in and out, like with your mouse wheel is, is pretty good, but sometimes there's functions where uh, maybe you want X and Y to be small, but you want Z to be huge. And so in that instance, uh, you could go here and change uh, say individual X, Y, or Z bounds without um, without adjusting the other ones. So usually everything will adjust at the same time if you're just doing a, uh, these plus minus buttons or uh, using your scroll wheel, but these uh, give you a little bit of flexibility on adjusting a single, uh, single axis range instead of uh, the whole thing. So just a few options. Uh, hope that is helpful when you're navigating through some of these. Uh, I will mention with the vectors, you can uh, do some dot and cross products. So I'll just uh, do that and then uh, kind of leave that as the last thing. So uh, let's say if I call this vector, this green one A, and I'm going to go ahead and hide those. And let's go ahead and define a vector B. Uh, so V will be vector from uh, let's go from the same point like so from one two three uh, but this time a different direction let's say we're going um, negative one five and negative two all right so there will be my other vector and it happened to pick green i'm going to change that to orange all right so uh so there are my two vectors that are right there all right uh, i can do a dot product so A times B with just the normal right asterisk uh, that you would usually use for multiplication. Uh, that'll do a dot product, right? So I get negative 38 uh, for that value. You can also do a cross product by typing in the word cross. Uh, as soon as you hit that last S, it'll change it to the, um, the X version of multiplication uh, for that cross product. And a cross B, it'll show me you know, kind of this um, perpendicular vector to both of the vectors I had before, right? So uh, that cross product should make a right angle, right, with both of those. And the magnitude will be based on, you know, kind of that uh, parallelogram that's formed by um, just make, taking both of these vectors, shifting them to the tails and ends, and uh, making a parallelogram out of those guys. So, so that area will give you the magnitude of that cross product. Um, Notice it didn't tell me what the cross product was. It just showed it to me on the graph, right? So I can see it on the graph, but I don't exactly know what it is. Uh, one way to get around that is uh, to dot it with uh, some other vector that you know. So we could define uh, like our i, j, k vectors. Uh, so this is kind of a, a long workaround, but uh, it'll give you at least a little bit of a way to, uh, to get those values out. So I could define i as my Right, vector from 0, 0, 0 to, and I need another parenthesis there, out to 0, or 1, 0, 0. All right, so that is my i vector. And uh, let me see, it's going wrong here. Function vector cannot be applied to a point. 
and a 3D point. Oh, I forgot a comma. That's what it is. Uh, so there's my I. Right? My J will be vector. Um, again, zero, zero, zero. And my starting point. Um, you wouldn't have to start there, but it's the easy place to start. And I uh, will say zero, one, comma, one, comma, zero. So that'll be my J. And uh, you might see them right if you zoom in a little bit more. You can see them right there being graphed. Uh, and then my K will be vector from zero, zero, zero to uh, one or zero, zero, one. All right, so there's my ij k uh, vector basis right there. And now what I can do is I can take that cross product result and uh, dot it with ij and k, and that'll tell me what uh, those ij can, ij and k components are, because uh, all the extra zeros are going to eliminate uh, everything else. Uh, so if I'm taking this, we'll say a cross b, and then I dot it with i, right? Um, so now whatever my i, j, and k components were for that cross product, um, the i I'm multiplying by 1, the other two are multiplying by 0, and then we add it up, so that ends up being 8. Uh, so that is uh, the i component of that a cross b. Uh, do it the same on the other one, right? So a cross b, and then dot that with j. Uh, so I get a 7, and then the last one, I cross B, and I'm going to dot that with K, uh, and I get a 1. So that cross product is 8, 7, 1 uh, for this cross of A cross B, uh, defined by these vectors. Again, these vectors, um, I don't actually have listed. I have, just have start and end points. So I'd have to actually subtract those to see what the vectors were. Um, I'll leave that for you guys if you want to look at it, but uh, that's just a way of working with vectors a little bit in Desmos 3D, a uh, way to see what they look like, where they are um, with a given start and end point, and then also um, some of the computations that you can do with them. Uh, this I hope will be helpful as we move into our next video, which is looking at using Desmos to uh, find the distance between two skew lines. So we're going to use Desmos for that in the next video. All right. See you guys soon.